servers are kind of a scary place. And um, I think what's really made a change in them in the past few years is containerization in a lot of ways, and especially Docker. So I wanted to kind of take the idea of let's take a bare metal, brand new, fresh Ubuntu server um, and install Docker on it. So not only we're we talking about Docker Engine, but Docker Compose, uh, making sure you can access it without sudo. And then we're going to throw a Minecraft server in there, just kind of show you the benefits and the power of running your own server. So it doesn't matter if this is a virtual machine on your desktop, if you're running it directly off your desktop, if it's in a virtual machine in the cloud, um, like Linode or Azure or AWS or whatever uh, service you're using, or even like a laptop in your closet. All of these are acceptable places to run a server. Um, and I think most of us, including myself, that have gotten into running servers started on some old laptop they just kind of left in their closet. So that's a great place to get started. Personally, I'm running this on a virtual machine just directly on my system, but um, kind of follow along however you'd like and let's get going. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right over here and we are going to SSH into the server. So again, this is just super simple Ubuntu server. Uh, the only thing I've installed so far is the open SSH server. So now that we're in, we can kind of clear this and get going. And we're just going to follow along in the official documentation of Docker to get going. So uh, here's the installation methods. The way I'm going to go is what I would recommend, which is to add the um, Docker repository to your system so that you can update it. And um, it's just going to make it a lot easier down the road to manage everything. So starting off here, first command it wants you to do is do a sudo apt get update. I'm just going to do sudo apt update, um, but you could really do either. And this is just going to make sure all of your packages are up to date. And just like that, it checks everything and we are good to go. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to install um, some additional packages here. So you've got CA certificates, which is going to be used for handshakes to make everything sure everything's secure. Curl is going to make sure that you can download things. GNU PG, I honestly don't know. And LSB release is just going to be usually some driver stuff involved, but definitely correct me if I'm wrong about that one. I'm not a master on every single application that server is run. So we're just going to right click and paste and you can run this command. And there we go. Yep. Taking a second, but there we go. Everything is now installed and we can move on to step two. So it's gonna ask for you to use that curl command we just downloaded to get a GPG key. This is pretty much gonna make sure that what we're doing is actually coming from Docker and that everything is secure. Uh, this is gonna be like one of the fastest commands you'll ever run. So again, we can just copy it. I'll just control shift V. We're gonna throw it right in and just like that, it's done. So what it did is it downloaded that key and then using sudo, it made sure to put that actually in a place that we can access it um, and that the system knows where to look for it. And once we've done that, we're gonna see the next command. It's about what repository we're gonna add. So by default, it looks like um, stable. Yep, right there. So stable is probably what you wanna want. If you're trying to be on the bleeding edge of some kind of certain feature or something like that, you might wanna just go for nightly your test. But I would recommend about 99% of the time, unless you know what you're doing, going with stable because it's gonna cause you the least amount of headaches. So again, just copy that. Control shift V and we're gonna put that in there. So it's just kind of telling our system which version of Docker we wanna use. And that LSB release is actually going to kind of tell it what we're running so it knows what to get. So you could even do an LSB underscore release and okay, no LSB modules, that's on me. Uh, I'll throw a CS in there, Focal. So that's gonna tell you, okay, we're running the Focal version of Ubuntu or Ubuntu 20.04. So that way it's gonna know again, which repository to hook us into to make sure that we're getting the proper updates and that everything works properly. Then after that, we get to do a sudo apt get update again. You might be wondering why we're doing it again. And that is because we just added some new packages to our repository. So if you can see, we now have download.docker.com forward slash Linux forward slash Ubuntu, looking at the focal stable. So that's exactly what we told to do. The LSB release said we're running focal and we said we wanted the stable version. So now we have those extra packages and we can actually install some stuff. So what we're going to install is gonna come straight from Docker's repositories. 
and it's going to be Docker CE, Docker CE CLI, and container D.io. So that's going to be the container engine, the container engine CLI, and then container D, I'm assuming, is some kind of system daemon. And that's actually a pretty big install, 500 megabytes. So give it a minute. It's going to take some time to kind of figure out everything and put it in the proper place. And in the meantime, we can kind of just keep reading along. So um, reading along, it looks like this is actually just going to have you choose different versions. So if for whatever reason you need uh, 1.5.3, you could specify that. Um, or if you want to, you know, um, put it on like 1.8 or something like that, you can do that. You can make sure that you have the proper version. If you're just running this locally um, or just for your own personal use, you're going to want to use just whatever is default. But um, I know, especially like with work, I use an application called Terraform and we have to use a specific version so that we all can share the code together. So if you know you're going to need a different version, you'll know. And if you don't, just kind of go with what you want. And then we can actually just run our first Docker container here. So it's pretty simple. It's just a hello world container. Just kind of show everything's up and live and it's working. So just right click, paste that, and we're going to run the hello dash world container. So it's going to pull the image and there you go. Hello from Docker. So we can even start to do some fun stuff. Like we can do a sudo Docker PS. It's going to show no images are online. But if we do a PS with an a flag, there's the hello world. So it's not something that's running constantly in your system, but it's, you know, just to make sure that everything's running, that you're good to go. And if you really don't want it there, you can do a uh, sudo Docker purge flag A. Maybe. So Docker system. You know what? We're going to move on from that. Um, I'm close, something like that. Uh, it's it's going to let you um, actually clear out your old images. But what I actually want to do now is get you um, with sudo not required. So again, you're probably going to go onto Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever you're using and uh, figure out how to run it without Docker or without sudo to run Docker. So it's pretty simple. Um, so if you look at the groups, there's going to be a group for Docker. And what you want to do is you're just going to do a sudo uh, user mod. So we're doing a user modification. We're doing ag. And we're going to do docker. And we're going to give that to the user. So in this case, because it's a virtual machine, their actual name is user. But you want to put in your own name there. And now if we do a groups, you're going to see it's not there yet. But you exit, you log back into the system, you run groups again you're going to see Docker. So it does have to, you're going to have to log out and log back in, but it's going to give you the ability to, now we can just do a Docker PS and it's going to show our images. You don't need to um, have to use sudo. And there's actually a lot of reasons you might want to do this because now you're sitting in a different user space, right? So when you're calling these commands, you're doing it from your account and not the root account. Um, which could cause some issues down the road, especially if you're trying to validate some kind of permission or something like that. So I recommend um, adding yourself to the, the Docker group, but there are some security and privacy concerns with that. So just if you're running it locally, you're not going to have an issue. Um, and again, it's one of those things where you're going to know if you need to manage that security risk. So if you don't, I recommend doing it. It makes it a lot easier. The next thing we're going to do is install Docker Compose. So I kind of explained Docker. It's a container engine. It lets you, you know, build and destroy images that make it really easy to just lightning fast make applications and serve them. But um, what's going to be involved with that is you have to do everything th from the command line, which I love the command line more than anybody else. But I also know it's super beneficial to kind of store your infrastructure as code and make it, you know, easily deployable and manageable. And you can kind of, you know, reference it and see what kind of flags you had set and change things and rerun it. Um, so that's really what Docker Compose does. It uses a markup language called YAML, which I think means it's not a markup language, but we can just call it a markup language. Um, that's going to define a lot of parameters to actually build your server out. So we can go over here. I've got another tab. And again, use your favorite search engine and type in 
how to install Docker Compose, the Docker documentation is going to come right up for you. So um, it's pretty simple. Um, the way they do it is primarily by binaries here. So it's not going to be operating system dependent. You're just going to kind of follow along with this, whether you're using uh, Arch Linux or Ubuntu or Slackware or Gentoo, whatever, whatever kind of flavor you're running, which makes it a bit easier, but also a bit more, a bit more annoying to manage. I'm going to be quite honest, but I've never had any problems in the past with it. So I'm going to copy the command, and this is going to get you the stable release of Docker Compose, which is again what we want. You could go with nightly or test, but I would really recommend just going with the stable. So we can paste that in, and that is going to actually grab the image from Docker. It's going to kind of look at some of the parameters of your system and make sure that you're getting the right version and everything. And it's then going to put it into user, local, bin, or binary, Docker Compose, which is going to make it so you can easily call it. So there you go, just like that. So what you're going to want to do now is a chmod. So this chmod is going to make it so uh, you're changing the permissions of the file so that people can execute it. That's what the plus X does, which means if we tried to run Docker Compose right now, it would not work. Um, it would The system kind of ask you what you're doing. But once you put an executable flag on it, it's going to make it so that we can actually run this binary. And just like that, it's done. And then if you run into issues, they recommend doing symbolic links. I've never had that issue, um, but we can see if it's going to happen right now. So we're just going to do a docker dash compose. I'm going to put a flag flag version. And just like that, 1.29.2. So everything is live, everything is working, and we can actually get into the image. So how do you build a Docker image, right? Um, there's a few ways to do it. Easiest one I've found is go to hub.docker.com. And again, we want to build a Minecraft server, but they have everything. If you want some kind of SQL server, or um, I mean, look at all of these down here. You've got a Redis database, Node.js for building Node applications. Uh, you can even install Ubuntu on it. So you can put Ubuntu on your Ubuntu. And if you really want to, you can install uh, Docker on there and put Ubuntu and Ubuntu and Ubuntu. You can get pretty deep. Um, Traffic is really great. Um, but we're going to do something a bit more fun, which is Minecraft, right? So just go into here. You're going to search Minecraft. And I usually try to go with the one that has the most downloads. So if you look here, we got a million, 3,000, 1,000. This one is 100 million. So I think it's you know used a good bit. Um, and this is kind of the one I've been basing things out of. So you've got a few different ways to do this. If you just want to run it um, without using Docker Compose, pretty much put that command in, it'll come online, which is super neat, super easy. But again, we're trying to build infrastructure as code here, right? So if we go into the GitHub page, we can actually find a bit more. Um, and looking for Docker Compose, where to go? Use control F here, right? Okay, here we go. So this is really all you need. Um, and you don't even need all of this if you really don't feel like it. It's just going to make your life a bit easier sometimes. So kind of here, we're just going to make a new file. So we're going to use Vim. So that's my preferred text editor, but feel free to use Nano or you know write this in VS Code or Notepad++ on your main system and then just copy it over. That works too. Um, but we're going to do it and we're going to do .yml. Again, because it's a YAML file. You can also do .yaml. It's up to you. We don't have Vim, so we're going to use Nano today. Forgot it's a bare metal server, right? Nothing on it. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to define the version. And there's a bunch of different versions built into Docker Compose. Really, I would recommend just using um, whatever the Docker Compose file you're kind of building out of is, right? So there's version 2, version like 1.8, version 3, a lot of different versions. They have slightly different syntax for how they're going to work with things. Usually you can kind of use a version 2 on a version 3 or a version 3 on a version 2, but not always. Um, but we're just going to start with a version 3 here. So most important thing to remember, if you ever have a Docker Compose issue, you probably got the spacing wrong. So we're going to do our best here to make sure we do this kind of on the fly with proper spacing. Um, and you'll notice I'm using, you know, eight tabs here while this is using two. As long as you keep them uniform, you're good to go. So what exactly are we doing, right? So we decided we're using the version three of Docker Compose. We're using a services and we're defining those right now. So one service we're defining is MC for Minecraft. And the first thing we're going to do is tell it what image we want, right? 
So the image we want is that one we were looking at, which is it's G Minecraft's dash server. So that's going to know to look into Docker Hub and find that image. Um, and you can also use images from GitLab or AWS or GCP or wherever you're hosting your images. Um, but we're just pulling ours directly out of Docker Hub because that's kind of the easiest way to do it. And then we're gonna define some ports here. So ports, we're gonna be doing a 25-25565, which is the default port for Minecraft, which is gonna make it a lot easier for handshakes and stuff like that. So 25565, and that's going to be the internal port. Um, and then we're also going to cast it to the external port. I might actually have those backwards. I believe it's external than internal. But what we're saying here is there's going to be a port on the server, 25565. Make sure we share that out of our out of our Docker container so other people can access it. After you find the ports, we're going to set some environment variables. Um, and this is going to really vary from application to application. Um, but we can just, you know, again, you're probably going to want to follow along with these. And there will be, um, if we want to get into it, there will be ways to find out this kind of stuff. So if we actually go all the way up and look at the, the kind of the contents here, we can find the Docker file, which is going to kind of tell you all of these things. It's a lot of work to do it this way. So I really just recommend um, looking for other people's Docker Compose and building your stuff that way. But if you really want to know why certain environment variables are set, that would be why. So for this environment variable, we're just saying the EULA to true. So you know we're agreeing to the terms and conditions of running a Minecraft server. So once we set that to true, we are good to move on. Next one's going to be TTY, um, which is going to be like um, allowing you to access the text interface to interact with the server from the server rather than like just from the Minecraft console. And so we're going to set this one to true. Um, and actually, you do not need to put that in quotes. Um, it's going to be a Boolean value. Um, and with that, again, it's going to let us edit the server configs and stuff from the actual server instead of having to be inside the Minecraft client. And then standard in, underscore open. Honestly, I think that's most likely the same thing. Um, I'm not 100% certain. Um, and you're probably not gonna always know every flag you're doing in Docker, um, but just kind of follow along with it and kind of test it on your own and make sure what you're doing works. And if it doesn't, you can edit it. And then we're gonna do a restart and we're gonna set this to unless stopped. And this is a really cool part about Docker. You've probably seen similar things like this before in virtual machines. So unless I, as the owner of this Docker container or you know anybody on this system comes in and says, take this down, it's going to restart itself. So if your system goes to a reboot, it's gonna build this automatically. If Docker crashes, which I've never seen before, but let's say Docker uh, container engine crashes, it's gonna restart itself when it restarts, right? So that's just a really nice flag to have. And then lastly, we can attach a data directory. Um, this isn't required. Um, I actually do run a Docker container with Minecraft and I don't really carry this, but I also don't care about the quality of that server and if it goes down. So if you do, and you probably do if you're running it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you attach that directory. So what we're doing here is this is going to be the host device so we're going to make a folder on our system called minecraft data and that's going to store the data directory sitting on the server and just like that that is all you need to do so we can press Control x since we're nano we're going to save that and just like that if we're doing ls there's going to be a docker compose here so now we've got the infrastructure as code and we've got everything installed on the system to make everything work now we have to get it online so it's, it's, you know, we had that one command where we just kind of docker run hello world. This one's slightly more, more involved, but really not by much. So we're gonna do a docker dash compose. I'm gonna say up, because we wanna bring up the image. Uh, and then we're gonna put a flag D in there to say run it as a daemon. So we don't actually have to, you know, constantly see the uh, terminal outputs, right? And just like that, we have a screwed up character, huh? So we can actually nano that and while scanning for the next token bound character backslash t so this happens all the time i'm actually just going to edit this because again docker just or yaml files really don't like um improper spacing so maybe there was an issue with me using eight spaces maybe i just typed it wrong 
but we can just actually just change it to spacing and kind of do it manually ourselves. And that's just going to be a lot more uniform as well, right? So following along here, services is on the same tab as version. So we're just gonna do two spaces for MC. Then we're going to do everything based under MC is gonna get four, right? We'll leave that one there. And that one I'll explain. And so these are gonna get two additional flags because they're, their parent for this one would be volume and this is a child. So it's going to fall underneath that and it's gonna need additional spacing because of it. So just two more and then for ports, we're also gonna do the exact same thing here. So it's gonna be finicky. You're gonna do this a lot and you're gonna have issues with your syntax and is this a list or a string or you know, is it being mapped? Uh, that's all part of it. And now we can do Docker Compose. And just like that, you're going to see it's going to pull a lot of things here. So it's going to be pulling these from the Docker Hub. Um, it's going to be downloading them and then just pulling everything online. And based on those flags and parameters we set, it's going to automatically build everything up for us. So this can take anywhere from, you know, five seconds to I've seen it take minutes and minutes and minutes. And just like that, um, we should be online so we can do a docker ps and just like that you're going to see right here uh, we're casting it out so we can do a net stat as well if you really want to see that stats we're going to put a flag plant on it and you're going to see 25565 is running so now this is where it gets fun you can pull up minecraft and this is just running on my desktop click play Always got an update with Minecraft. I don't play it enough. Um, and we can actually connect to this, right? Because that's what's important here. And when you're actually running this, maybe for your friends or something, you are going to have to go into your router settings and properly cast it out. But if we're just running it locally, we're not gonna run into any of those issues. So come here, we're gonna click multiplayer, do a direct connection. We're gonna be passing in the IP of this server, right? So it's 192.168.122.227. So as long as we put that in, give it a second, and we should be playing in the server. And there you go. So you're gonna see, we're gonna have a really good connection because we are you know, directly in this server. Everything is still generating, right? Um, and that's all it takes. So just like that, in um, only about 20 minutes, we were able to take a bare metal default Ubuntu server, um, install Docker uh, Engine, install Docker Compose, get your group permissions set properly, and then write, download, and run a Docker file that's uh, hosting Minecraft right now. So hopefully this helped you learn something, demystified something a little bit about containers or servers or just even uh, the process involved in getting services online. Hope you learned something and uh, see you guys in the next one. Thank you.